Welcome to lecture number 34 of the course Quantum Mechanics and Molecular Spectroscopy. Previously, we have been looking at the selection rules for rotational, vibrational and electronic transitions of diatomic molecules. In this lecture, I am going to talk about rotations of a polyatomic molecule and the consequent selection rules. If you look at the uh, rotationals of a diatomic molecule, let us consider diatomic molecule A and B and under rigid rotor approximation, Okay. We have the energy is given by B, in, B into J into J plus 1 okay. and if this has centrifugal distortion then this will be given by D into J square plus into J plus 1 square. So, this is because of the We talked about centrifugal distortion because when a rotating body what happens is that the length increases okay, because of the centrifugal force. So, that is converted by centrifugal. For most of the molecules D by B okay, is equal to uh, 4 times B divided by vibration whole square and it is much less than 1. Okay, v vibrational is the vibrational quantum number vibrational frequency in centimeter inverse. For diatomic molecules such as NO, okay, d by b is approximately equal to 3 into 10 power minus 6 at j equals to 1. But if I go at j is equal to 60, d by b will be approximately equal to 0 0.01. That means, even for very large values of j, one can ignore d by b or the d by b value is very small. That means, the value of this d is going to be really very, very small. Only when it goes to very large means, let us say if j is equal to 200, okay, then the centrifugal distortion constant will start making effect. Okay. So, one has to go to very, very large. Okay. values of j okay, will make the d that is their centrifugal distortion constant will make d uh, prominent. Okay. Otherwise, in general, one can ignore. Okay. Now, this is about the diatomic molecules. What about molecules that are larger than diatomics, triatomics, polyatomics? Because in chemistry, most of the time you are encountering with the molecules that are much larger in shape. Okay. Now, if you take a polyatomic molecule, before we get to the selection rules for polyatomic molecules and how the rotation spectra of the polyatomic uh, polyatomic molecules is interpreted, let us look at how polyatomic molecules will generally behave. Okay, if you have a molecule in which uh, you have, let's suppose, uh, 
a molecule. So, in general, the polyatomic molecules are divided into three uh, possibilities. Okay, so. Okay, there are three categories of polyatomic One is called spherical rotors. Second is called symmetric rotors. And third one is called um, spherical symmetric and asymmetric rotor. Now, one of the analogy that I can give between spherical rotor, symmetric rotor and asymmetric rotors is like triangles. One of the things that I can tell about uh, these rotors in terms of a triangle, think of it in terms of a triangle, okay, there are three sides A, B, C. And correspondingly, one could have three different ways one can. So, there is one rotation axis around this. I will call it as axis A and there is another rotation one can rotate along B and the other one is along C. Okay. Now, for an equilateral triangle you will see that ABC will be same. So, spherical rotor is analogically is like a uh, equilateral triangle. Okay. Now, the other thing is a scale and uh, isosceles triangle where A and B are same and C is different. One could have like this or one could have also oh, one could have it like this. So, and you will see that the C axis And when you, you can see that A and B are equal, in such case one can write A equals to B equals to C, okay, which is a consequence of A is equal to B is equal to C. In, 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 this, in the symmetric rotor is more like A is equal to B not equal to C, which is also a consequence of A is equal to B not equal to C. Similarly, if you have a scale and triangle, then of course all three sides are different. So, A, B, C. In that case, the rotation along A, the rotation along B and the rotation along C are different. So, A is not equal to B not equal to C, which is a consequence of A not equal to B not equal to C. So, what is that I am trying to tell you here is that if A, B, C are the lengths okay, of the uh, sides of the triangle, then depending on how they are placed with respect to each other, okay, okay, you can form either a equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle or a scale and triangle. Similarly, if you have a spherical rotor, depending on the rotational constants A, B and C, okay, then the, the they can be categorized into three of them that is the spherical rotor, symmetric rotors and asymmetric rotors. Now, now, how do I call this? For example, if you would take an object, a cube, okay? this is just an example to example, but of course, uh, when you have molecules, they are three dimensional objects. So, if you just think of a cube, okay? then one has one axis is this axis, second axis is this axis and third axis is this axis. And the lengths are, let us call it as A and I will call this as, as A axis, this is B, this is B axis, and this is C, length is C and this is C axis. Okay? Now, simply A axis does not mean it is like this, but it is going to be rotation along this axis is A. 
Similarly, you will see that if I want to rotate along this axis that is my B axis okay. and the C axis will be perpendicular to A and B. Okay. Now conventionally <coughs> you can have three axes but if it is perfect cube for a perfect cube you will see that A must be equal to B must be equal to C. So, whenever you have an uh, such a possibility, okay. Now, you can think of a cube as a uh, all the eight corners being on a surface of a sphere, okay. Similarly, one can think of the uh, tetra a molecule that is tetrahedral in shape like methane. Methane also is a cubic molecule because the carbon atom will be at the center of the cube and the hydrogens will be at the opposite vertices, okay, four opposite vertices. So then you will have a methane that is a tetrahedral. So anything that is more of cubic in nature or can be any cube can be fitted on a surface of a sphere. So if molecules have that kind of shape they are called spherical rotors okay for spherical rotors in general for spherical rotors they should be at least two non coinciding okay at least two non coinciding ax, uh, axis of symmetry with n greater than or equal to 3 that means that will be at least two non coinciding axes that are c3 or more okay uh, coinciding x of symmetry c n ok. Of course, s n will also do because s n has a element of c n in it in proper axis of sym uh, symmetry. Now, for symmetric rotors one c n axis with n greater than or equal to 3 ok. Otherwise For asymmetric rotor of course, if you do not have any C3 axis molecules which do not have C3 axis uh, C3 or Cn axis with n greater than or equal to 3 ok. Simplest thing that I can think of is for example, if you take ammonia. And we know there is a C3 axis, but if you take water, there is only C2 axis. The maximum axis is C3 for ammonia while that is C2 for water molecule. So, for water it becomes an asymmetric rotor and ammonia becomes a symmetric rotor. Okay. And uh, you can think of many other situations. So, for example, if you have uh, uh, if you have uh, methane that is now you can think of you know this as one if you think of this as a plane and this is another plane. Okay. Each plane will have one C3 axis. So, there will be one C3 axis here 
and this is another C3 axis. Okay. Since there are two C3 axes which do not you know, coincide with respect to each other, then methane becomes a say, spherical rotor. So that is how you classify. One can take a look at the textbooks and they will be list out how various molecules will be classified as spherical rotors, symmetric rotors and asymmetric rotors. Now, if you take a spherical rotor, it has three axes A, B, C and there is a moment of inertia along each of them. So then you will have I A, I B and I C. And since it is a spherical distribution, you will see that I A must be equal to I B must be equal to I C. That means the moments of inertia are basically distributed similarly along all the three axes. Okay. But when you come to symmetric rotors, okay, there are two possibilities I A equals to I B which is greater than I C or other possibility is I A is greater than I B equals to I C. Okay. In this case, two of the moments of inertia are equal and the third one could either be smaller than the other two or larger than other two. If such is the case, it is called oblate rotor and this is called prolate rotor. Okay? Now one can think of oblate and prolate edges. Oblate and prolate are various shapes that you can think of in a symmetric rotor. For example, benzene, if something is like a disc, then it is an oblate rotor. So this has a disc shape. Okay. So for example, benzene. And this is ammonia. More of a ball shaped or egg shaped. Okay? So, in the symmetric rotors, you have two possibilities one is the prolate rotor, and other is an oblate rotor, while there is only one in the case of the spherical rotors. But in the asymmetric rotors, it can either be uh, towards these asymmetric rotors, can either tend to a prolate, so what a prolate rotors or an oblate rotor. For example, substituted benzenes with no elements of symmetry will be more like an oblate rotor. But water will be more like a prolate rotor. Okay? So it will depend on the shape. Okay? The energy which is function of J, so that will be equal to Bj into J plus 1. Okay? And if you have centrifugal distortion constant that will be D into J square to J plus 1 square. And we found that the, uh, of course, one can ignore this, let us not uh, think about it, ignore for small j's. So what you get is b j into j plus 1. Okay? And when you look at the transitions, delta e, j to j plus 1. This will go from, okay. now what will it go from? So the, this value will be b j into j plus 1 into b j plus 1 into j plus 2. Now, if I look at the transition, then what will happen? So, B J plus 1 J plus 2 minus B J to J plus 1. So, this will be equal to when I calculate, this will be equal to B into J plus 1 if I take common, and this will be nothing but J uh, into j plus 2 minus minus j. So that will be equal to 2b j plus 1. 
So, this transition will be equal to 2 B j plus 1. Okay. So, delta E will be equal to 2 B j plus 1. Okay. Now, it turns out that each transition of course, the next one will be also uh, 2 B j prime plus 1 okay, whatever that value of j will be. So, it will keep increment by one value all the time. Okay. Now, it, it so turns out that this is also true for spherical rotors. Why? Because one cannot distinguish between the three axes of symmetry that is A, B and C or I, A. Uh, three moments of inertia are exactly the same. So, one because the value of B will depend on depends on is inversely proportional to 1 over i. Is proportional to 1 over i. Okay. Is inversely proportional to uh, moments of inertia. So, what happens is that since all of them are same, so we will not be able to distinguish between each direction that is A, B. So, even though it is a three dimensional molecules, you will not be able to separate out the A, B and C dimensions. Okay? Therefore, the spectrum will look like a spectra of a diatomic molecule. So, spherical rotors will have a very simple spectrum. similar to diatomic molecule. However, in the case of symmetric and asymmetric rotors, the spectrum will get complicated which we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.